four tables here. I can tell you Mark Selby, former champion here, is one apiece with Robert Milkins. Barry Hawkins is 2 0 up on Ryan Day. Still in the first frame on the other televised table, Neil Robertson and Mark King will be with them uh, later on. Although I can tell you they had a problem with one of the pockets, one of the middle pockets. Mark King potted a blue, not at great speed, and it, it came out again. Great red there. That's unlucky. But I think we know what's coming. Well, nothing wrong with this pocket and nothing wrong with his long potting. Four great matches on show in this session, David, isn't there? You know, I mean, Robert Milkins is playing well. He could, uh, uh, there could be a shock over there against Mark Selby. Who knows? I just think it's so hard to pick a winner of tournaments, pick a winner of matches even these days. You know, you look at the top half, it's kind of surprising lineup but in some ways not that surprising we know how well Mark Davis has played of late and all these players now they fancy the chances they're playing so much snooker they're all getting into form and getting good results under their belt they fancy the chances when they come to these venues twice across oh, I think as he caught the pink Wow. Well, the miss, the miss has been called, but there's no way Sean will take it. There's a couple of reds on here. <coughs> One. That's a great shot. A lot of backspin on the cue ball to get it back onto the black. He's so aggressive as well at times, Sean Murphy, uh, David, isn't it? Like all these top stars are, really. They want to get in and try and win the frame in one visit if they can. They want the Reds no. open as fast as possible. Yes, it's always been his great strength when he has gone on the attack. Certainly did that when he won the World Championship. There's just a little gap there between the Reds. He's had a look at that. If he just those two Reds, if he uh, he finds the gap and catches that Red, the furthest one away, that should be perfect. The beyond Reds to both corners, I think. He's got it. Well, that's a little bit unlucky because he's just glanced it rather than a thicker contact and. Uh, Cue ball's gone away. The pink's covering reds. Those two aren't to plant. So that uh, he took a little calculated risk there, and it hasn't quite come off. There's still pots on, but neither. Are difficult or easy, I should say. Might play the right hand one. Seventeen. That's a great recovery. Well, he's not making life easy for himself, but I think this red goes, although he will be queuing over other reds. Doesn't fancy it, might play the safety.
Well, he's having another look at it. He knows that the cue ball's gone away from the Reds for, for a safety shot. Awkward. Oh, he's clipped the other one on the way through. He needs the cover. I'm not sure whether the Brown has come to his rescue. Well, it hasn't. So that's a loose one there from Sean Murphy. And we've seen the quality of these two players so far. Well, he's lost the cue ball a little bit there because he had the red was tucked into the corner of the pocket, but it's not too bad. He has a shot on the black and the pink. Played that beautifully, nicely held for the red. I think this might go behind the pack actually if it doesn't go onto the brown spot. Lovely touch there. Well, I suppose in some ways that's helped because it hasn't covered reds at this end of the table. Another great scoring opportunity here. Another good chance to put a frame on the board. Well, is it the cannon to the pack? Can he get it this time? No, just a positional shot. Played that with a lot of side. Well, what we've seen so far, David, uh, frame over, perhaps? Well, I, I did tweet before the match began. I said, you must, must watch, because it could be a cracker. And for once, it looks like I might be right. Because uh, it's shaping up that way. The quality's been superb. You've been right more than one occasion. <laughs> All right, twice then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm with you. It is shaping up to be that way. It is, it's, it's high quality, isn't it? You just kind of expected it. We know how good the two of them are, and you could guarantee as well it's a packed house. You know, that atmosphere, I think, makes a big difference. I think this is a great tournament. Lovely venue, comes across really well, and obviously if this man can stay in it. It guarantees big crowds. I mean, they've been big anyway, but certainly for Ding. Bit of a coconut shine going on there with these reds into this corner. Just under hit it. He won't be best pleased with that one. 29. Don't want to say too much, David, because so often they miss the next ball. But he could have done with a little bit more on the cue ball there. This needs potting. That's a cut back. Looks good. Well played. <laughs> The thing about this game, you not only need skill, you also need nerve when the big shots come along. This was one here. And he combined both there. Well, again, he struck it beautifully. You know, when he held that uh, pink into the centre for the red, he hit that sweet as a nut.
keep going. It needs to keep going for that bottom red. I don't think he's got there. 33. Unless that red goes through the gap, which would be unbelievable because I don't think he's looked at that. Well, this is a massive bonus. Well, I don't think he's played on that one. But he'll take it. Yes, that's the third thing you need. I mentioned skill and nerve. You also, at times, need a bit of luck as well. And he knows he didn't play on that one. I think. Yep. Sounded heavy, didn't it? He's still on the bottom red, though. Clever. Took the red in the corner, just avoided the other red there with the cue ball. Might play a little cannon into the two reds here and get them all open. Then it becomes a frame winning chance. Well played. Perfect. Very noticeable of the tempo of these two boys around the table. You saw Ding just go back to the ch chair there, wipe his hands down, whatever. Give himself a little bit more thinking time while he was having that cue ball cleaned. And now this is a great chance to make it 2-1 for him. This is, uh, this is great quality from these two lads. This is what you strive for as a professional sportsman in any chosen career. You're trying to play your best at all times, to strive and to get near perfection if you can. Well, these two lads are certainly not missing much. And that was frame ball, just to really make sure. Well, he's missed that one. Now, then, I think Sean will come back here. Yes, as long as the red's on, of course, there's a chance. He needs two snookers to tie. Murphy just doing the maths. Uh, as I say, two snookers to tie, but there's always a chance of the free ball. So Ding could have done with potting that. It was a good 67, but frame not necessarily over yet. One. Make sure of the black, because the pink and brown are in great position to lay snookers. Might just pop the yellow here. It's just got a fraction straight on this yellow. So if he plays a little stun run through for the green, he can lay the snooker off the green and see which way he goes here. Well, he did have a side angle. And this is a great chance for a snooker now. Just caught the wrong side of it. Sean Murphy, 
Well, that's disappointing, isn't it, for Murphy? That was, as you say, a good chance to lay a quite a nasty snooker. And things knocked it in. It's a great pot. Three. I'm sure Murphy will feel, though, he shouldn't have seen it. Well, he won't be back at the table now. There'll be a concession after this shot. Yeah, the Sean Murphy did have a chance there to lay that snooker. He needed two, but uh, he didn't lay it. Ding knocked the green in. It was the 67 that did all the damage early on. And so, for the first time in the match, Ding Junhui is in front. He leads 2-1.